Here we're going to be quickly looking at why atoms have no overall charge. So there are two things in an atom that has a charge, our protons up here, and they have a charge of plus one, and our electrons down here. And they have a charge of minus one. And it's really, really important that you remember protons plus one, electrons minus one. Now, when you're periodic table, you are going to see some boxes that look like this, and they're going to have numbers in. So if you look at boron, it's going to have this little number down here, and then it's going to have a big number up here. It is this little number down here that we're interested in for this video, and this is the atomic number. This is equal to the number of protons, and in an atom, it's equal to the number of electrons. So an atom has the same number of protons and the same number of electrons. So if we look at boron as our example, it has five protons and five electrons. So five electrons and five protons. So it has five positive charges and five negative charges. One, two, three, four, five negative charges. And one, two, three, four, five positive charges. Now we know that positives and negatives can cancel each other out, so the overall charge on this is zero. Here we've got two more examples, lithium and fluorine, and again it is this number here that we are looking for. This is equal to the number of protons and the number of electrons. So lithium has three electrons, it also has three protons. Three positive charges, three negative charges, and they cancel each other out. So three positives, three negatives, there's going to be no overall charge. Fluorine has nine protons. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, and it also has nine electrons. And the positive charges, again, are just going to cancel out the negative charges. So it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 positive charges, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 negative charges. So in an atom, they are always going to have no overall charges because the positive charges are always going to cancel out the negative charges. Now we're going to talk about ions. These are basically the same as acids, but they've got one very important difference. They do have a charge. So this is my model of sodium here. Again, we've got our little box from the periodic table. This is our atomic number. That tells us the number of protons, and it tells us the number of electrons in an atom. And this is our mass number. That tells us how much the nucleus here is going to be weighing. I've got my protons, my neutrons, which I'm just introducing to make everything um, accurate, and my electrons here. Protons plus one, neutrons have no charge, there's zero, and electrons minus one. So I've got my 11 protons in the middle here. I've used my neutrons to make the mass up to 23, and I've got my 11 electrons around the outside. Now, in a sodium atom, this is going to be uh, have no overall charge because there are 11 positives and there are 11 negatives. But when the sodium bonds, something happens, this electron, it gets shared or taken away or eaten. And you can see now there is a slight unbalance of charges. So if I just line everything up for you, you can see that the positive charges are now in a different quantity to the negative charges that we have one more positive charge than we do have a negative charge the neutrons here are neutral they have no overall charge so we don't need to worry about those positives and negatives here are balanced so this extra positive is going to mean that a sodium ion ends up with a positive charge the next one we're going to look at here is chlorine. So it has 17 as its atomic number. So I've got 17 protons in the nucleus here, made up to 35.5 with neutrons. 
and then I've got 17 electrons arranged around the outside because this is my atom. When chlorine bonds, it gains an electron from somewhere so that it gets that full outer shell. And now we have an imbalance in the number of positive and negative charges. So if I to line all of these up here for you to see, you can see that E is going to have a different number of positive and negative charges, giving it an overall charge. And chlorine is going to have an overall negative charge because it has gained that one electron. This is a part that always confuses students. It gains something, so it gets a negative charge. But you can see all of the positive and negative charges cancel each other out, apart from this negative charge over here, which is left over. So chlorine is going to have a negative charge because it has an extra electron. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new videos. Check out my website, bromoscreen.com, for any new videos, all the videos sorted by exam board, the blog, and any um, extra advice there is. Any comments, questions, topic requests, or um, corrections below.